Hi, I'm Kyle Stedman. I'm a writing and rhetoric teacher at Rockford University, and today I want to talk about how to use Microsoft Publisher to make great flyers of your own. Now, when I'm teaching this in class, I always tell people to look around for great, awesome flyers on places like Google Images, or uh, maybe look at ads and magazines, or maybe look at posters you see on the wall. Find something cool that you like that you think you might be able to emulate yourself. So, for instance, one awesome flyer that I found is on a site called Canva.com. Canva is great. You can use their templates like this Valentine. Valentine's Film Night to make your own flyers without having to do it from scratch. But, you know, sometimes in class I'm interested in actually teaching students to make things from scratch. Like, what if I didn't use the template? What what skills would I need to have to be able to make something like this? So I'm going to try to make something that looks somewhat like this from scratch here live on the video and show you how I'm doing it. The first thing I see here is we're going to need some fonts and we're going to need a photo if we want it to look something like this. Now, if you're trying to emulate something really specifically, there are sites like Identifont which actually help you identify fonts. Like if you have an awesome one in front of you and you're like, all right, I got to find out what that is. Uh, I might say, yes, it has serifs. These little spikes or slabs at the end. Okay, great. Um, and, and then it might say like, look at the J. Where's the J? Um, it's, you, know, you can answer these questions on and on and on and eventually Identifont will help you find out what it is. Personally, I don't think we have to find the exact fonts from, from this flyer, but if we look at it, we will see that there are uh, two fonts here. There's one that has serifs. It has those little things, those little feet at the bottom of it, you know, the Valentine's Film Night. But then there's also the sans serif font. That's the, the font that's used here and over here. So if I'm trying to emulate this, uh, maybe I can take their good advice and find two interesting fonts. Maybe one serif for the title and one sans serif for the non-title. Well, personally, when I'm trying to find interesting, fresh fonts that don't look boring, I just Google it. I Google things like, hey, 40 free serif fonts for digital designers. And you might find a site like this one that has a whole bunch of possibilities that as long as I'm on my own computer or a computer where I'm allowed to install things, I can just grab one of these, install it, and then use it in my Microsoft Publisher project. So in this case, I am going to follow the lead. I was looking through this earlier, and I really like this one called Sling. The reason I chose Sling is because, again, if I'm following the lead of my sample. I like that this uh, is a serif font which kind of has some professionalism and formality to it but it's also a little bit fun. You notice that S there, you notice that G there, there's a little bit of stuff there saying like hey we're a little bit whimsical and I was like alright well what if I found a serif font that's a little whimsical. You see that Q, you see how this is, feels a little interesting. I don't know. Um, let's try it. I'm going to click it Often on a site like this, uh, it's going to take you to another site. In other words, like this site I was just on that has the list of all the fonts, they just collected them elsewhere and made a list of their own. And once I go there, they're list clicking me over to Font Squirrel in this case. Um, I'm going to click Download the font. Download TTF as a common font type file. Let me just show you really quick how to do this if you've never done it before. Um, I'm using Microsoft Chrome. It's going to ask me where to put it. I'll just uh, save it in my Downloads folder. And then th whatever I download in Chrome should show up down here in this little like download space. So I should be able to click it and it should open up a box that looks like this with the names of these fonts here. You notice there's a, a standard one, a bold one, and a light one. So I should be able to just like go ahead and double click each one and then click install. Yes, I know there are you know other ways to, to do this. Um, once it's grayed out, I know it's already installed, it's already gone. Um, this is just one simple way to do it without bothering with zip files and unzipping and all that stuff because I know some of you might be confused by even what a zip file is. So let's just go ahead and install all three of these. Sweet. We're done. Um, I could do the same thing with sans serif fonts. If you're like sans serif, remember the serif is that little thing on a, at the feet of a font and this one, these ones don't have those little feet so it's sans serif. It's with, without the serif. Um, I'm going to try this public sans font, right? They, they say it's a sensible font for serious stuff. It's a no nonsense, no nonsense font. And when I look back at my sample, I notice this is kind of a no nonsense font for the popcorn, picnic blankets, etc. So let's let's do it.
The next thing though, remember I got my fonts now. I need to find a good photo if I'm emulating this one. Uh, if I'm looking for photos, I tend to go to two places. I often go to a place called Flickr. You notice there's no ER, it's just Flick R. What I like about Flickr is that after I search for something like Picnic, say, um, I get the choice to uh, find photos that I'm licensed to use, photos that I'm legally allowed to use. For the, the case of this video, I'm not going to explain all that. I'm just going to choose modifications allowed because, hey, I want to find a photo that I can modify myself. So here's an interesting one. Let's say I, I picked that one. Um, I could click it, say, yeah, this looks like the photo for me. But on Flickr, I can always look over here and see what are the, the licensing requirements. Um, in this case, it says some rights are reserved. Let me just click that and show you what happens. Um, if I chose that photo, it says, hey, I'm free to share it and adapt it as long as I give it attribution, as long as I don't make money from it, and as long as I share alike, as long as I essentially add the same license uh, to my flyer that I found here. Um, if you're like, wait, what, what, what does that mean? Um, I really could just like put literally this language on my flyer itself, copy and paste it on, maybe really small kind of credit font. Okay, great. What if that freaks me out? What if I don't want to do that? Well, there's another site I really like to use a lot called FreePick, free P-I-K. Um, and again, I was on here, I searched Picnic, and I chose the, the free resources. Um, one thing I like about FreePick is that they have really good stuff uh, in terms of photos and non-photos. Like what if I want like a drawing like this and that's the thing I want. Um, what if I want uh, a photo like, you know, I, I can essentially see lots of different kinds of stuff. Let's say I like this picture. This is the one for me. This is the one for my flyer. Again, I might scroll down. Oh, actually that's, that's kind of good. Uh, I like the idea of having a person here that kind of gives it a little drama. It gives it a little bit of a movement. Personally for me, this is what takes the longest when I'm making flyers. I just browse and browse and browse and browse pictures. Um, often at these two sites, yes, there are plenty of other places, but um, what I like about this is it makes how to uh, give attribution to this photo really easy. It's, it's actually a little easier even than on Flickr. So let's, let's say I like this one and I click download, right? Download options. Great. Um, you can pay money if you don't want to give any attribution, but what if I want to use it for free? Well, then I can I can attribute the author. No big deal, right? Let's let's go ahead and, and click it. I'll show you how. Um, it's going to say, where do you want to download? And I'll, I'll same place. I'll put it in this downloads folder. Great. Um, it's downloaded and it's all big. Uh, but if I if I X out of that, let me show you. I, I skipped past it. Like how to attribute it for other media. Let me show you how. Um, for printed elements, essentially all I have to do is say imagefreepick.com. Um, I'm not totally sure if I have to say this cover or this flyer has been designed using resources. I think I could probably say either of those. So I'm, I'm just going to go as simple as imagefreepick.com. Okay, great. Okay, you might be saying, I thought we were making a flyer here. What are we doing? Remember, we're, we're getting the the fonts that we want and we're getting the photo we want okay part two let's go to our program microsoft publisher now there are a lot of programs you could use for this again i'm specifically interested in publisher um, when i open it it'll say hey what is the size that you want and if i look at my sample over here i notice that's not really quite uh u.s letter size that's not eight and a half by eleven and sometimes that can be an interesting inspiration for me so i'm going to choose more blank paper size and try to pick one of these that looks a little bit more like that um uh, you know, which one you pick is totally up to you. You can just go plain, but I don't know, so many other flyers look like normal letter size. So why don't I be a little creative and do something a little bit different? I'll try this legal portrait eight and a half by 14. I'm gonna hit create. And I'm gonna zoom out a little by holding control and doing the roller ball on my mouse. Um, I can see I've got this fairly big space there. I'm gonna zoom out a little more as you can see the, the size. As I'm using Publisher, I'm gonna constantly be like zooming in and out to have more and less space. You know, you can also do that down here. But again, I like control roller ball. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm also going to uh, make this bar a little smaller because this video, uh, I want you to be able to see more of the actual project. Well, let's, the first thing I want to do, let's get our photo into here. Now, so if I'm back here in Chrome, remember when I downloaded this photo from FreePick, it showed up down here. So let's do the same thing as always. Let's uh, click it. Uh, and I see I've got a JPEG picture here. I know that's my photo because JPEGs are usually photos. Uh, the easiest way to get a photo into uh, Publisher is literally to drag it in. So I'm going to go back to Publisher so I can see that over here. Then I'm going to go back to this box. I'm going to take this this photo file and like drag it literally into that Publisher box. I'm going to let go 
and hopefully if it worked it should just like show up right in here um, sometimes if you're lucky it'll also kind of like auto size it a little bit to the size now um, it actually made it a little smaller than I want if I go back to my my sample I see their photo goes literally all the way to the edges so again I'm gonna try to copy them there might be reasons you might do that or might not do that but for my purposes I'm gonna do it now let me show you something that could happen if I if I drag uh, say this left thing here and I stretch it way out um, oh my goodness my picture looks super ugly right I can stretch things really poorly badly in publisher so what I'm gonna do is undo that that was control Z you can undo anything with control Z you can also do it up here with this undo button um, I'm gonna instead make the smarter choice of dragging and resizing only with the corner because if I drag with the corner you see it always does uh, essentially the the correct ratio so it's always gonna it's never gonna look um, kind of funny the way that that other one did now sometimes now that I dragged it all the way to the edge I'm, I'm a little bit like wait did I uh, am I actually at the bottom or not so sometimes I do a little like pull up pull down okay and often in in uh, this program and publisher when you get it right to a place it'll kind of like lock on to a line it'll lock on to the edge it'll kind of just feel right when it gets right there um, if it doesn't feel quite right, um, you can always um, click it and then click up, down, left, right to kind of play with it a little bit. But I actually think that's pretty good. I think so far, this is a really a really good start for my flyer. So I might like zoom out and think to myself, um, do I like the way this uh, ratio is? Because if I look at my sample, I remember, yeah, the, the picture was a little bit more than half and the words were a little less than half. But this is almost like a little more than that. Is that going to be okay? Um, if it's not, I could always crop it. So like, for instance, let's say I want a little less picture. I can click it, and when I click the picture, I'll get this kind of magic picture tools menu that pops up. Actually, that goes away if I click somewhere else. Like, look, if I click over here, whoa, where did that menu go? Well, the menu's only there when you click the thing you want to do something to. So I click it, it's back. So let's click picture tools. Now I have a crop option. Um, I'll try that. I'll click crop, um, and you see the, the bars actually popped up around here to say, hey, you might want to uh, crop this. And now if I drag, uh, let's say I, I want to crop a little bit off the bottom. Um, you can see like this is what the new one's going to look like. That's what the old one looks like. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Hope it worked. Does enter not do it? I always forget. Let's hit crop again and see. Hey, it worked. Um, now I picture is smaller. So now I'm going to drag it back down to the bottom again until it locks in place. Okay, sweet. This looks a little bit more like my sample. Again, I don't think there's a necessarily a right or wrong here. You could play with it, play with it either way. Um, so what's next? What do I want to do if I'm following my sample? Well, I need uh, some good plain color on the top, and ideally, I want that color to be something that like looks good with my photo in some way. Well, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, literally draw a square. I'm going to go to the Insert menu and go to Shape. You can see there's all kinds of shapes I can choose. I'm just going to choose this plain old rectangle, and I'll click it. And once uh, I select that, what they want me to do is essentially click and drag to make a rectangle of whatever size I want. Let me just kind of make a random size rectangle and show you. Um, there you go. There my, there's my rectangle. Now I can move that around the same way I can move around any other thing in Publisher. Uh, now. I know that uh, in my sample, again, it's completely taking up the entire space. So I'm going to just do that again with my rectangle. I'm going to make it 100% fill all the remaining space that isn't that. Now you have two problems. Um, one, I don't like that color at all, right? What does blue have to do with that picture? That's pretty, pretty ugly. Two, if I zoom in, I can see that my rectangle actually has this like black outline, and I don't want it to have that black outline. Again, my sample is just the color itself. So Remember how um, when I clicked the picture, I got the special picture menu to do stuff to that picture? Well, it's the same thing with my rectangle. If I click the rectangle, I get a special menu to click to do stuff to that rectangle. So I'm going to click it. I'll click Drawing Tools Format. And these two are really interesting, important options. I can change the shape fill color, and I can shape the outline color. So first, let's get rid of that outline. I'm going to do Shape Outline. Um, and you could say, like, what's the weight of the outline? Like, how big do you want it to be? Well, I don't want any, so I'm just going to say no outline at all. Now, if I click around, I should be able to see, it's because sometimes it's easier if you click somewhere else, that there's no longer any outline there. It's just a plain old box. Sweet. I'm almost wondering if this is the right size. Do I need to make it a little bigger? I'm going to try. Um, 
I want it to completely match. Um, you might notice as I'm dragging this bigger and smaller, this little pink line sometimes appears, this vertical line underneath it. That's saying, hey, right now, if you let go, it's going to be the exact same lined up with the thing below you. In other words, Publisher wants you to line stuff up perfectly. If I'm not 100% sure, I can just zoom in, zoom in, and make sure it still looks right. Sometimes when you get um, that size, it's different. Okay, great. Um, so I got rid of my line. I'm going to click this again, Drawing Tools. Now I want to make a color that matches something down here. Sometimes I just kind of play around with this by trying to make it match exact colors from my image. So I'm going to click it, I'm going to do Shape Fill, and then I'm going to do Sample Fill Color. Um, now I have this little eyedropper, you see. So now I can click anywhere in my, my project here and say, hey, what if this top box completely matched, let's say, the yellow stripe? I don't know. That's that's not the worst idea. Might be might be okay. Uh, let's let's try it a couple other times to see if there's anything else I like. What if it matches um, this kind of pink? Yeah, too pink, right? Is that bad? I don't know. Some people like pink more than I do. Uh, what if the green? Eh, kind of looks like it's trying too hard to copy. Um, for me right now, especially because the yellow, yellow, yellow is always kind of a subtle accent color. I'm gonna go with that yellow. Sweet. Now I've got a project that, if I zoom out, uh, is starting to look a little bit like this. Okay, now I notice a few elements here, right? I notice kind of a main title over here on the left and my serif font, um, and then my sans serif underneath, my sans serif there, and then my serif font has a date. So let's try just making that first part uh, first. Now I'm going to insert a text box to do that. I can do insert draw text box is probably the easiest way. There's some other ways. Um, and again, just like with my rectangle, it's going to give me this little square icon, which means essentially start clicking and dragging and your text box will be the size that, you know, <laughs> that it is when you, when you let go. And I can start typing here. Um, for instance, labor day picnic. You can't see that because it's so, 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 so small. I get it. Um, they say they kind of have one big word there in white, one in black. I don't know. So uh, they also have the the words kind of line up. So uh, not sure how well it's going to work or not work. But uh, let me do a couple things first. Um, first, I'm going to make this text bigger so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to highlight all of it. Um, you could also use um, Control A. And you notice the second I start doing stuff to text, it gives me this little thing saying, "Hey, what what do you want to do with that?" Oh well, I'm. I'm going to go ahead and make this a lot bigger so I can read what I'm doing. Uh, and then I want to make it that serif font. So I'm going to go back here and remind myself, which serif font do we get? We got one called Sling. So now that that's installed on my computer, we did that so long ago, I should be able to um, highlight this and Sling should literally be in my list of options. Oh, I saw it. Nice. Uh, now, if I click away, I can see that it's it's black right now. Uh, now, I might, there's a couple ways to do uh, the next part, which I think is kind of to make Labor Day and Picnic line up, you know, to, to make them kind of like end at the right on the same, same size. Uh, now, I could do it kind of the annoying way, which is like, kind of like keep guessing on size. What if this is like 66? I don't know. What if Picnic is then... Um, I don't know, 76, it's gotta be bigger to match up, you know. I'll tell you what I like to do instead. Uh, personally, what I like to do is play with something uh, with this little up and down button. To kind of, if I click up and down, you see it'll uh, make the font get bigger and smaller as I click. You can see right now, though, it's jumping from 48 to 72. So um, sometimes I actually have to make the box bigger. And then watch if I highlight it again. Um, now there's a little more space for the whole 72 to match. And I, I actually kind of like that. That looks pretty good. It's taking up about the same amount of space as my Valentine's and my sample. So uh, let's say that that 72 works for Labor Day, but I got to get the word picnic um, to about the same size. So what I'm going to do is highlight it and then keep clicking up and up and up until it looks like about the right size. Now I notice it disappears at one point, right? 90 is there. It's too small. 100, though got so big that it like is off the screen. And again, I'm going to try making my box a little bigger just in case that's a problem. I, what it was, it was trying to um, get below <laughs> the, the area that my box was. Sometimes if I make my, my box bigger, it'll actually let me do that a little better. Okay, the word picnic still looks 
a little too small. I'm almost starting to wonder if that's too intense. Labor Day picnic! Like it's yelling at you. You know, their, theirs wasn't like that because they had about the same number of words. Um, I don't know, but maybe maybe I like that. So what I'm going to do is uh, just keep that. I'll 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 try it for now. Oops. I'm going to resize my, my box so I can see it all. I'm going to try following their lead and make the top white. So again, I'll highlight that. I can choose the color here, the color white. Uh, I think that's still visible against that yellow. If it wasn't, I might change the background color. Uh, I'll tell you though, what I like least right now is the amount of space. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Uh, the amount of space between these seems really, really big. Uh, if I highlight some text and I right click it, I get this all these menus, and one of them is change text, and I get paragraph options there. Do you see that paragraph? Um, paragraph in Microsoft Projects is the way to say how much space happens every time you hit enter, which is another way of saying has a new paragraph. So I'm going to go to my paragraph options, and I notice that every time uh, between lines, it's kind of more than single spacing, and after paragraphs, every time I hit enter, it's doing a little bit of extra space. So what I'm going to try, I don't know if this is going to work or not, I didn't pre-do this. I'm going to try making that zero after paragraph. I'm going to try making this um, just one, like single space. Right? So I made that one, I made that zero. Let's hit OK and see what happens. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. I think it made it a little bit closer, which when I zoom out, I think looks a little better. Let me undo to show you the difference. It used to look like that, and now it looks like that. And again, there's just something that feels feels writer about that, you know? Is, is that just me? I'm not sure. Okay, so now, uh, while I still am using my serif font, I want to go ahead, oops, Canva's like, hey, what are you doing? Do you want to you make something? And I'm like, no, show me your flyer. Uh, next thing I want to do is make a, a white circle with a line, and then with some serifs, add those things there. Let me just do it without talking about it this time, so you can kind of just like watch what I'm doing, and we can hurry this video along. Okay, I hope some of that made sense, right? Uh, I made a text box, copied it, drew these things from scratch, changed the the um, line length, all all that sort of thing. You can you can always ask me if that doesn't make sense. Now I feel like this is starting to look really good. The main thing I need to do next is add a couple of text boxes with my sans serif font. Now you remember the sans serif font that we chose was called Public Sans. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to insert a new text box. Sometimes it's a little easier to kind of draw it somewhere I don't want it to go and then to drag it where I want it to be later. Uh, I'll just make it about the same size. Um, again, I'll just start typing, I don't know, sample text here. Um, but when I highlight it, I can choose public. You could actually just type public sans. Great. Then I'll keep making it bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, now theirs was all caps, and it was tended to be white down here, and it was every other up here. So, okay, let me let me just try making it all caps. Sample text. Um, I actually think it's probably going to be a little bit too big if I want to have a lot of a lot of details. I almost want to make it bold too. That kind of looks a little bit more like theirs. Um, and let's make it white as well. Oops, that's shape fill. Sorry. Uh, font white. Now, what's the what's the kind of thing that I'm putting here? Uh, let me kind of drag it in place first. Oops. Um, sometimes when things overlap, you kind of have to say you know, move them a little, or you have to say, "Hey, it's okay for this to not affect it." Uh, there's a there's a bring forward and bring back kind of option, but 
I, so I, I sent this one back a little bit and that made it appear again. I don't know, don't even worry about that. So sometimes when things disappear, that's the option. That's the question is, how are things wrapping with each other? How are they interacting with each other? How are they making stuff move? Um, the text they use though in my sample, in my sample is the date uh, and the time. So let's just uh, make something up, right? Let's say, uh, oops, sometimes I, I highlight the wrong box accidentally. So it's like, how can I get back to that little box? Ah, it's kind of annoying, right? So sometimes uh, literally in Publisher to, to get back to that, to be able to edit that one I'm doing, you almost have to like move something out of the way, get to that box. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> easy. Uh, drag it to the right place and then drag this back to the right place. I know it's really annoying. Um, oh, there it is. Oh, you can't see it because it's white. Uh, let's let's make this an address like, I don't know, one, two, three. Oh, it was all caps, right? Main Street. Uh, do I want a comma there or not? Uh, you know, it depends where I'm putting this, right? Will people know what Rockford is? Do I... Uh, do they need to know it's rock or do they need to know another state, another city, etc.? Now, there's probably all kinds of ways that I could um, save the time, right? Let's say it's um, 2 to 4 p.m. Do I do a comma? Do I do something else? Again, what do they do here? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like they don't have anything. It's just like the period from the the avenue. So, I don't know. Let's let's just try that. They, they don't actually put a... I don't know. Maybe I should say the name of the park. Um... Main Street Park. Do they put a comma between there? Yeah, comma. Here's the avenue. Here's this. Um, so it looks like I probably need to make this all a little bit uh, smaller. Let's go a little like that. Now it all fits. Now I can drag that into place. Sorry, this is going so long, guys. Um, the main point is that uh, now I've successfully emulated another thing here. Let's, let's um, do one more text box to get some of that other kind of info up there just really fast and again i'll do this without um, describing what i'm doing because i think i think you know by now let's just leave it at that right uh, now again, their sample, they have every other one, uh, the font changes, color, uh, if I want to kind of adjust the placement of that, I can kind of drag this box around, if I want it to not interact with stuff, I can shrink the box so it's less likely to mess with stuff. Um, I also noticed that they right aligned it, and that that right align kind of subtly lines right up with that circle, so I'm going to follow their advice, I'm going to highlight it. Um, Oops, lost it. Highlight it. Uh, choose this little alignment button. No, I don't want it centered. Uh, you know, some of these things you can get under home. So I'll do home and then I'll choose this here. Align right. And then I can try to see does that line kind of line up with that? Pretty close. Uh, honestly, maybe these words should all shrink a little bit and that should move in. I don't know. Um, how high should it go? They They leave some space. So maybe I'll kind of Oops, drag the wrong thing again. Maybe I'll make it something like that. Maybe I'll zoom out and kind of see how that looks. All right, this is looking really, really good, guys. Uh, last thing I would say is that I forgot to attribute this photo. So let's go back to where I got the photo from. Remember, it needs to say imagefreepick.com. So to, to be legal, to uh, give credit to the people who gave me this awesome picture. I'm going to just insert one more teensy tiny little text box and I'm going to say something like um, imagefreepick.com. Now I know you can't see that right now and I know it's also not a font that matches my other font. So again, I'm going to change it to public sans. Uh, I don't know, what if I change it to white? Does it pop a little bit more? If I make it bold, does it pop a little bit more? Uh, maybe, oops, dragged the wrong thing. Uh, what I wonder is, is, is that almost too big? Like if I zoom out, I actually kind of like that. It's subtle, but it's not like so subtle that it's like rude and I'm leaving it off. Uh, you know what? I noticed just now that I'm, I'm bolding that public sands and that public sands, but I forgot to bold 
these public sans. Um, you notice when I bolded it, some of the stuff didn't fit anymore, so I'm just going to make my text box a little bigger, and it should all fit just fine. I think I like that. The bold looks a little little better in terms of this font. I might actually make this a little smaller. Why, why does it have to be 10? Why not just go like, I don't know, let's go 8. Cool. Okay, I know that took a while, but following a model, I made what I think is a pretty attractive, simple flyer. It's ready to go. Thanks a lot for watching. See you later. Bye.